Good evening and welcome to this beautiful revitalized historic venue. And thank you for joining us for the 2021 all member meeting. Nothing could have prepared us for what we experienced since our last all member meeting in November of 2019. The pandemic affected each of us in different ways, both personally and professionally. I'm inspired by what I've seen from our community. When things were at their worst, you were at your best. To stay on top of the unfolding pandemic, the normal cadence of six board meetings a year accelerated to a weekly meeting. Thank you to my fellow board members that I see gathered here in the hall, and I don't see, but I'm sure you're up there on the balcony, uh, for your engagement throughout this challenging period. Also, I wanted to extend a warm welcome to our new board members, recently elected by the membership, and thank you for your willingness to serve. And finally, I would like to introduce our Leadership Council, a new opportunity for members who want to deepen their involvement in our strategic priorities. And to the frontline employees that are here in education, law enforcement, hospitality, manufacturing, and especially healthcare, we're grateful for your efforts to keep us in the fight. I know that some of the healthcare teams are here today, and let's give them a round of applause. Early on, we had to cut through the fog to see the facts. And accurate information was critical for business leaders making decisions in the best interests of their employees uh, and their customers. And to avoid one-size-fits-all regulations, MMAC facilitated discussions between members of the local and state health departments. This response was effective because of the partnership we formed with the Medical College of Wisconsin. Led by Dr. John Raymond, the MCW team provided data and key insights to help guide the broader business community. So as you may recall, Dr. Raymond briefed the MMAC board on a regular basis during those weekly meetings. He and Tim hosted more than 200 public webinars reaching an audience of more than 30,000 business and community leaders. This fact-based communication expanded to a weekly segment on WTMJ Radio. The partnership with MCW is instrumental to informing our members and serving the public good. So, we felt it was most appropriate to honor Dr. Raymond today with our prestigious Champion of Commerce Award. Dr. Raymond. Hold your hands up. John, congratulations. Jonas and Tim, thanks for the partnership. And I'm really honored to accept this award on behalf of the thousands of faculty and staff at the Medical College of Wisconsin and the public health and health system leadership who found new ways to work together during the pandemic to show our commitment to health, science, and safety throughout the pandemic. Our health and economy segment also achieved national acclaim through the Association of American Medical Colleges for the unique approach that we took together to join these two critical elements of a thriving society. Now, I would like to acknowledge a few key individuals who were and remain essential partners on our journey. From the MMAC and the M7, Tim Sheehy, Chris Jenkins, Jim Page, and Todd Brody. From Aurora WDC, who helped us connect with our business leaders and the community, Eric Johnson and his entire team. And from MCW, and again, I said thousands of people, but I'm not gonna name them all. Uh, Mara Lord, Dr. Laura Cassidy, Dr. Ben Weston, Dr. Kirsten Beyer, Jenny Boltman, Holly Botsford, Charlotte Running, and our underappreciated, but hopefully now well-recognized data analysts, Andrew Yaspin, Amin Bemanian, 
and Ali Namadi who provided us analytics. Now our partnership began with a text message on March 21, 2020 between Mara Lord and Eric Johnson of Aurora WDC. And it was the beginning of a beautiful relationship that matured and was tempered throughout the challenges of the pandemic. Eric and Mara met with Tim Sheehy later that morning. And then we set a call with the MMAC business leaders that Jonas and Tim mentioned for Sunday, March 22nd. And we created the health and the economy segment the following week. Now we've learned throughout the pandemic that health and the economy are intertwined in complex ways and that we don't need to choose between health or the economy. In many ways, what's good for our health is good for our economy. Thank you so much for this recognition and God bless all of you. Thanks, John. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you again, Dr. Raymond. You know, the pandemic recovery has highlighted several issues. It has unmasked a tight labor market, showing thousands of job openings and the intense challenge you all have in filling them. It has stretched product lines, laying out the advantage of a shorter supply chain. And our politics have become even more polarized, making common ground harder to find. And racial inequities were given a new light. Now, more progress must shine through. But periods of great change breed great opportunities. On March 5th, 1861, as the great Civil War burst upon the United States, 23 business leaders gathered in the back room of a hardware store on the 200 block of Water Street. At that meeting, this association was founded for the purpose of advancing the civil and commercial needs of Milwaukee. And from that first meeting, it would have been impossible, Jonas, to see where we are today. Milwaukee has remained remarkably resilient through wars, recessions, and pandemics. Today, it ranks as one of the top 25 U.S. metros measured by per capita income, one of only a handful of regions to consistently make this list. And we believe this is the best measure to measure prosperity. But we're mindful that not all have benefited. Like association leaders who came before us, we have a civic duty to lead Milwaukee to a better future. Your support as members and as investors makes this work possible. Together, we're empowered to create a globally competitive region that fosters high value jobs to sustain a vibrant quality of life for all. And this evening was made possible through the generous support of a number of sponsors. At the presenting level, we thank Advocate Aurora Health, J.P. Morgan Chase, Haribo, Potawatomi, and QPS. And our reception after this event is sponsored by Old National Bank and TNM Partners. I also want a special thanks to our Chairman Circle sponsors. And now to hear from one of those first sponsors, it's my pleasure to introduce Jim Skogsberg, the President and CEO of Advocate Aurora Health. Jim. Good. I want to add my words of welcome to those you've already heard, and, and uh, Tim and Jonas, and, and express some congratulations to my colleague, uh, Dr. John Raymond, for the well-deserved uh, recognition. As President and CEO of Advocate Aurora, uh, I want to tell you how pleased we are to be a sponsor of tonight's event. And uh, I want to express my thanks to Tim and the MMAC team for putting on you know, tonight's event so that we can all share in this important conversation about advancing economic prosperity in our region. It's an honor to represent Advocate Aurora Health uh, on the board of this vital community institution. It's been quite a while since we uh, were last together. And during that time, so many, so many senseless tragedies have rocked our nation, our state, our communities, the most recent, of course, in Waukesha. In the minutes, hours, and days since, one thing became clear. In the wake of heartache and devastation, the true power of community helps to sustain us. 
we saw our incredible first responders rush to the aid of those injured and in need, neighbors helping anyone they could. We saw people run toward the scene instead of away from it. Uh, as those who were hurt were rushed to six different hospitals, healthcare workers everywhere jumped into action as we've seen them do heroically time and time again. Since that Sunday, we've seen friends, families, community groups, business owners support each other in every way possible, donating money and food and supporting one another, grieving together. The list of examples is endless. And at the core of all of this is community. All of us understand that no one person, no one organization can tackle all these challenges that we face by ourselves or alone. The obstacles are, are significant, too significant. Continuing health impacts of COVID, a workforce shortage, violence plaguing our communities, inflation, systemic inequities, and so on. And while the idea of collaboration among business leaders is nothing new, the last couple of years have borne out the value and necessity of working together. The pandemic shone a bright light, not just on the gaps and inequities, but on the impact of innovative thinking and the power of partnership. Together as a community, we saved lives. We got vaccines into churches and barbershops and people's homes. We kept businesses afloat and we helped start new ones. And we made progress on diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts at all of our companies. Our resources and our influence can affect meaningful change that lift up our communities and improve the quality of life. There is no doubt that we have a lot of work yet to do. I would go so far as to say this work will never be completed. But together, we can do so much more in service of our community. And speaking of service to our community, with the news over the holiday weekend of yet another COVID variant and cases back on the rise, Let's all remain vigilant. Please get the vaccination, get the booster, get the flu shot, wear the mask, and be safe. We want everyone, no matter the barriers they face, to have the opportunity to live well. Everyone in this room plays a role in that, critical role in achieving that outcome. Thank you again to MMAC, and thank you all for being here. Thanks. Good message. I appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome, Jim.